afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to season two of Footprints. I'm your host, Mr. Davis. I'm an educator here at BHS, and with me today are two of my favorite guys from BHS, two students here. This is Otis Laverie, and this is Seamus Lorden. And so we're going to talk a little bit about their footprints and who left footprints on them and and talk a little bit about their interests and what they're thinking about because, ladies and gentlemen, they were freshmen a long time ago in some of the classes I were I taught. And now, look at them. Now they are seniors. So my first question to both of you guys is, as high school seniors, right, what have you discovered um, um, sort of from freshman to senior year now? What have you discovered about yourselves in a little bit? You can go first, James. I'll go first. Uh, what have I discovered about myself? Oh, did you can go first. <laughs> right. You I've, go first. I've mostly discovered what I like to do. My freshman year, I wasn't really sure on what hobbies I like to do. I kind of just went home and played video games. But now, I, ever since probably late junior year, I know like what my hobbies are, what I like to do. Like I have stuff to do after school. Instead of just going home and doing nothing. Nice. I like that. So he discovered, you know, I, I can do some things other than video games, which yeah. is cool. We like that. What about you? Yeah, uh, just discovering what I like because as a, as a freshman, it was like COVID time. Mm. So there wasn't much to do. So then just over the years in high school, finding what I like, playing sports and stuff, just working hard in school. Playing sports. So that's a good transition. So let's talk about that because I noticed in, your, in my notes, you told me you like football. In basketball. Yeah, my, my right. two favorites. Two favorite sports. Yep. Do you play football? I do. Yeah. All right, all right. But not on the team? No, I, I play on the team. Oh, you do? Team. Oh, look at this. So this is something new to Mr. Davis. I didn't know this. This is awesome. So um, you guys have a football, football game coming up, right? Yeah. On Friday? Thursday, I think. Thursday. Okay, <laughs> all right. This is great. So tell me, what inspired you to play football? Uh, just watching, like, the Patriots as a kid growing up. I started playing in, like, fifth grade. Uh -huh. So and, and I always watch, liked watching... Patriots play on Sundays, you know, Tom Brady. So I, I decided one day, I, why not go play myself? I like that. Is Tom Brady your favorite player? No. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, no, not at all. <laughs> oh, that's okay, though. Listen, that's the GOAT for when it comes oh, to yeah. football no, as sure. far yeah. as quarterbacking goes. He's one of my favorites. Yeah, no doubt, no yeah. doubt, yeah. no doubt. So, uh, Otis, I noticed in, in my notes that you like mixed martial arts. Yeah. Now, I love mixed martial arts. I'm into the old guys, like, you know, uh, uh, Chuck Liddell oh, and yeah. Tito did. Ortiz and all them guys. So tell me a little bit, what initially drew you to mixed martial arts and Brazilian jiu-jitsu in general? It's hard to say because I'd always liked um, like the concept of like individual strength and mm -hmm. stuff like that and mm -hmm. being able to know what to do if something happens. Like, mm -hmm. if, like if you get robbed or something, it's better to know something. Yeah, happens. it's better to know something. Than and that. I've yeah. always liked that idea, but I was always too scared to go and actually like chase it and actually do something about it. But mm -hmm. there was a employee at the gym I go to, the Beverly Athletic Club. His name is Avery. And I was talking to him and he just like, he kept telling me like, just go do it, just go do it. It's not mm -hmm. going to be as bad as you think it is. And eventually, I went to my first jiu-jitsu class, went to my first MMA class, never looked back. I've loved it ever since. I've been training for about six months now, going as much as I can without a driver's license or a car. So <laughs> I love it. I love it. So that kind of just got you in the mindset of, like, I got to do something. Yeah. I want to figure this out. Mm -hmm. This is something that's my I interest. I'm interested in doing this. So let me go ahead and, and dive in and see what that's all about. I love it. Okay. <clears throat> Let's talk a little bit about weightlifting because yeah. you talked a little bit about that too, right? So do you have like any particular like type of regimen that you do oh, yeah. working out to sort of get yourself ready to uh, train a little bit? Tell me a little um, bit about that. I, I don't do any like sports specific training. A lot of people are super big on sports specific training. I'm not. Mm. I just go in there. I train a different muscle every day. And then train them again, and I don't I don't overcomplicate it too much. Okay. I right. like I lift like most people say a bodybuilder would, but I'm not a bodybuilder. I right. just think it's fun. Oh, I like that. I like that. Do you do any weightlifting, Seamus? Not as much as I'd like to. <laughs> not as much I'd, as you want. I'd like to start lifting a little more. 
I invited him to come to the gym today. Oh, you did? I, came uh, here. I, was, I was busy today, Mr. Uh-huh. He's I a little busy. We, we're busy today. <laughs> so let me ask you this question. How long have you guys been friends? Daycare? Preschool, yeah. When was that? Like, we, we were like three, so about 14 Three years, years old. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. that's amazing. And, and the thing, your journey is culminating to an end here at BHS, and you mm-hmm. guys are going to go and, and do your thing. I but know. think about that for a minute. Three years old, so... The footprints initially were left on each other as you were three-year-olds, and you decided to to become friends, and it kind of just blossomed into what we see today, yeah. which I really love. It's awesome. All right. Tell me a little bit, Seamus, about fashion. You seem fashion. to like fashion a little I bit. I do. I noticed in my notes. So what inspired you to interest in fashion, really? What well, was... I was always going to, like, the thrift stores and stuff, and, you know, I come across a couple of nice things. I'm like, hey, maybe I could, like, sell this. And then one thing leads to another. You're getting nicer and nicer stuff. And uh-huh. just, just selling clothes has always been something that's been fun to me. Just okay. something I've always always been able to do. And it I just love it. It's fun. Nice fashion. How about you? You you into fashion at all, Otis? Uh yeah, thanks to him. <laughs> <laughs> one thing led to another. Me and him went to the thrift store one day after school. I bought a pair of jeans for seven dollars. Next thing I know, I'm buying four hundred fifty dollar Balenciaga pieces from him. <laughs> because where, of this guy. Yeah. Where it starts the thrift store. He, he, he showed me what was up mostly. So do you envision yourself maybe Designing anything for people? I don't think getting into the designing really. I don't like doing all that. I just like I just like getting the stuff. You just like getting the stuff. <laughs> you like seeing something different and be like, I want to get that. Yeah, give yeah. me that. that. That looks cool. Yeah, I all like right. like the business and selling part of it. So I got to tell you a quick story. So when I was in seventh grade, I took home economics and mm-hmm. it was like, I it was sewing and cooking, and I and I was like into it a little bit, you know. Like my mother w- thought I was going to be the next like great designer so she bought me a, a sewing machine and I'm making all this stuff for my my brothers and sisters I'm making like these clothes I'm making like dresses for my my sister and for my mother and all that stuff and then all of a sudden I'm like eh, I hit like 9th 10th grade I'm like eh, I want to play football I want to play basketball and I just dropped it but it was great to to have that mindset because I had a teacher initially put that footprint on me of, of like the, my home economics teacher Mrs. Yeah. Rice put that footprint on me. They're like, hey, maybe you should try something new. And I was like, yeah, I should I should do that. And I ended up doing it and liking it. And so here I am years later, and that's how I got my wife. How you doing, honey? Uh, I would cook all our meals, right? And Because uh, she was, you know, she was an okay cooker, even though her, her grandmother owned the restaurant in Gloucester. But anyway, um, fashion and, and all of that stuff is, is really awesome. Tell me a little bit about music. You guys like music, right? Everybody likes music. It's yeah, universal, yeah, right? Yeah. All right, what's your favorite group? Uh, group or artist? Artist and group. Tell me both. My favorite artist is Kanye West. Ah. I, I know he's not the best person. <laughs> I don't really care. He makes good music. Um, he has great music. My favorite artist is probably Pantera. Or my favorite group, sorry, Pantera. Okay. Big Pantera so, fan. So here's what I want to say about Kanye. Very controversial now, we know. But I love the College Dropout. That was one Definitely. of my favorite albums. I have that on vinyl. That's the first album I thought that was really good mm-hmm. when he came out. And it was like, wow, this is awesome. You know what I mean? His music was really universal. It spoke to me a lot. You know, I like that. What about you? What's well, your favorite artist? What's your favorite group? One of my favorite groups is probably like Black Sabbath because mm-hmm. my dad, he like he like plays music. He's, he's like a rock star. So, oh, okay. All yeah, right. I, I grew up with like rock music in the he house. He plays guitar? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, nice. So in a band? Sabbath, yeah. <laughs> like, like Nirvana, awesome. all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, all always right. playing in the house growing up. So. Did you pick up guitar at all? I wish. <laughs> He has one. He I'm, has one. I'm a, I'm a poser. I own it. I okay, all right. <laughs> Tell me the like story behind that, then. Tell me the story behind the guitar. I don't know. My dad had one. He's like, you want it? I, I started to play, but I haven't played in a while, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little rusty. <laughs> so Mr. Davis is not a musician at all. I'm a DJ, so I love music, mm-hmm. right? But I'm like, I can't carry a tune in a bucket. So I, what can I do to stay around music? I said, ah, let me just play some music and I DJ. So I, I was on the radio station in high school. I was on the radio station in college, and uh, I did some like stuff for Kiss 108 back in the day, and Jamin 94.5, and all that stuff, and it was fun, right? And I still do that stuff today. I still do anniversary parties and weddings and all that stuff, so it's, uh, it's, music is awesome. Love it. Ask Mr. Davis who his favorite artist is. Who's your favorite artist? Um, that's a good question, Otis, because I have two. Like... Um, I, I love the Jackson 5. I got to like, be honest. Good pick. That was, that was like my, my era growing up. Yeah. That was really kind of my, my thing. I was into those guys. And Michael Jackson, he did his own thing, and he was crazy with it. And I loved it. 
Um, and then there was Prince. There you go, Prince. <laughs> so, I mean, those guys really kind of set the standard for me in my era back in the day. So I'm, I'm kind of partial to those guys. Um, now, let's talk a little about, about some of the future plans you guys have. Because I noticed you had something interesting, and so did you. Um, your future plans were what, Seamus? What were you thinking of doing? I plan, uh, I plan to go to college next fall, and I want to study business because, you know, I've been selling clothes. I kind of want to, like, do something like that because I think I'm good at it. It's fun. It's something I want to do. Okay. If I can get a better education, I'll call us doing that and make that something as a career. I'd love to do that. Nice. So just kind of sell your own designs or designs you find in thrift shops? <laughs> I mean, I, I'll be getting the best stuff I can. The yeah. highest quality stuff there is. I, okay. I like to sell all that. All right. Yeah. So nice. So basically a salesman. You can set up your own website. Salesman, yes. Right? Yeah, that's, and that's just sell that stuff, yep. right? That's what okay. I do. Yep. I love it. I love it. All right. What about you? Because I noticed... You said EMT and firefighter, and for me, that's interesting. I like. I I'm kind of curious. How did you come to that realization that you wanted to be a well, EMT or a firefighter? I was thinking, like, for a while, that like, because ever since kindergarten, you're kind of told like, oh, you need to go to college, then you need to work in an office, you need to work a nine to five, whatever. I don't really like that. Mm -hmm. I a big thing for me that I realized with even. MMA and Jiu Jitsu and all of my all of the stuff that I do really mm -hmm. I never want to do the same thing twice I never want to work the same shift twice and with being an EMT and a firefighter I've talked to the guys n you never get the same call twice sometimes it's a boring shift sometimes you're out of the you're out of the station every two minutes I like that that's that's what I want and I'm taking um Mr. West's EMS course right now at the school so that I should be able to get certified by August because okay. I'm not going to be 18, but I should be able to get certified then, and then I'll be able to work. So imagine, so here we are, you guys, from freshmen to seniors, and the footprints that have been left on you, you guys have taken those and you're moving those forward in your life, which is awesome, right? Think about that for a minute, right? Someone left a footprint on you, and you decided, I want to carry this. I want to take this someplace. I'm going to be an EMT or a firefighter. I'm going to do some fashion stuff, right? Everybody leaves footprints on us on a daily basis, right? We come into contact with people. Sometimes they're in our lives for a long time. Sometimes they're in our lives just for a minute. But no matter what, those footprints are always going to be there. And how do we carry those and how do we move those forward? That's what this, this podcast is really about. Because I love to talk about you guys and what you're going to do and how you're going to leave a footprint on the world. And I love that you're going to be an EMT or you're thinking about doing that in a, or a firefighter. You guys know... um. Uh, Jose, not Jose, um, um, what's his name? Oh, my goodness. The Leon's is his last time. He was on my show, and you think I would know his name. But anyway, he, he was going to be a soccer player. And at the time, he was like, he signed a contract when he was in eighth grade to be a soccer player. Mm -hmm. But he, he tore his knee up, and so now he had to rethink what he was going to do. And he said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, like, now I want to be, like, a, a state trooper. And I thought, wow, what a great thing to do. And I said, why? He said, well, Mr. Davis, I, I don't see any state troopers that really represent me, my, my, my background. And I was like, I get that. You want to you wanna push something forward and do something that no one's ever done before. And that's what you're thinking about with fashion. And that's what you're thinking about being an EMT or a firefighter. You want to do something maybe that people haven't really thought about doing, right, that are your age. Right, you guys are in school, and now all of a sudden, like this time next year, you're not going to be here, mm. right? And it's kind of sad for Mr. Davis because I've seen you guys for the last four years, and now you've grown into to, to guys who have decided you're going to do something special with your life, and that makes me really happy uh, to be part of that. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about, as you said, you said college you want to go to and your your future business plans and stuff. Do you see yourself running a huge business? Because now remember, Steve Jobs started his own business, the Apple business, from a garage, right? Yeah. right? Yeah. So now, do you see yourself maybe expanding to that global of thing or being like that? What are you thinking? Go as big as I can. <laughs> go big or go home. Right, that's right. Go big or go home. <laughs> I like it. I like it. What do you think the steps would be, though, that really kind of get you there? The steps, step one, go to college. Just learn as much as I can, mm -hmm. and then 
I mean, I've learned stuff just by selling. Okay. So. I like that. Exactly. So, so if I can learn from, from college and I can apply that to what I'm doing. So what do you think? Maybe um, learning on the fly is good, but maybe an internship someplace where you can, yeah. can kind of learn how to build a business. See how it's Maybe run. some marketing tips will give you, like how do I market my business? Maybe use social media to really kind of build that platform up. And give you like a, so people will be like, oh, I, I didn't know he did that. And then they all of a sudden they see it and they're like, oh, you know what? I want to get involved with that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So that's really kind of where it's at. I like that. Okay. For you, you're, you're thinking EMT and firefighter, which is good. Um, my wife would, would be happy because she loves like Chicago Med and Fire and all those shows. So she'd be happy with that. How did you really, besides that, come to the realization that that's really what you want to do? Like who, who imprinted that footprint that said, you know what? I think I'm going to do that, or is it just something you came up with yourself? Um, mostly just something I came up with myself, because okay. in that job, all you're doing is helping people. Like, with a police officer, sometimes you got to, like, everybody says they want to be a police officer, I want to help people, mm. but you're not always helping people. True. Sometimes you have to arrest people who you don't think did anything <laughs> wrong. That is true, too. <laughs> but as an EMT, that's not your job. No. You just go... Save someone's life, bring them to the hospital, mm -hmm. and then that's your job. You get paid for it, and that sounds that sounds great. And I know it's not like the best paying job, and I don't really care. Yeah. Well, the best part about what you want to do, and you, you you guys want to influence people and help people. Mm -hmm. You want to like my dad always said the th three biggest things in life were food, clothing, and shelter. Right? Those are the three things you got to have. Right. So you got to make sure, like, so you want to clothe people and get them the, some fashion stuff by Seamus, which I love. And you want to help people overcome some of the obstacles they might have health-wise, right? So those things are great. All right, tell me a couple things. Tell me one. What what roles do uh, friends play basically in in you coming here to the school and your high school experience completely? Like, what role does he play in your life and you play in his? Like, how does that work? What's the dynamic? You want to go first? You got something? I think. <coughs> A lot of people wouldn't come to school if they didn't have friends here, which is why a lot of people didn't enjoy online school as much. Some mm -hmm. people really liked it, but mm -hmm. I didn't like online school at all because yeah. I wouldn't get to see anybody. Yeah. Part of like what gets you through the school day is having friends that you know you're going to get to see because everybody goes to the same place for the same amount of time every day, mm -hmm. and it's so like consistent. It never goes away until you graduate. That is true. Absolutely. 100%. What about you? Same perspective? Yeah, same thing. Like, because <laughs> like, first year of high school, freshman year, the year before we were, like, fully online. So coming back and, like, seeing everybody, it, it was it was great. Yeah. You know? It's such a period of adjustment, too, right? Not only for the students, but for the teachers as well, right? Because we're hybrid, like, we're online, yeah. right? The camera's there. We're trying to teach some content to the kids. Kind of capture their attention. Can we keep it? All that stuff is really, like, was, was difficult, right? But you're right, being here and seeing your friends every day, because like you said, you spend a certain amount of time with them, is, is, there's nothing like it. Yeah. You know, there's, and that, that keeps you sort of engaged and active and, and happy and like, you know what, I'm going to come back tomorrow because mm -hmm. this is awesome. <laughs> right? That's what we do. Um, tell me uh, a couple questions here I got for you, and one for you and then one for you. If you could sit with anybody in history, anybody at all, sit with them, have dinner maybe, or have like, you know, lunch or whatever with them, who would it be? Who, do you, who would it be for you, Otis? I remember you asked me this. Yes, already. I did. Who would it be? Uh, maybe Daniel Cormier. Okay. All right. And why? Very good MMA fighter. Very nice guy. He has been through a lot of hardship in his life. Mm -hmm. And he's an older guy. Okay. He's been around the scene his entire life, so I feel like he'd have some very good There's wisdom for somebody yeah. who wants to do the same thing. For sure. For sure. I like that. Same question to you, Seamus. If you could sit with anybody in history, anybody, anybody dead or alive, if you could sit with anybody and have dinner, maybe, or lunch with them, who would it be and what would the conversation be like? Wow. There's so many choices. <laughs> Just one person, though. You only get one. Oh, man. One person. Mm-hmm. Maybe, like, like George Washington or someone. George like, Washington? Yeah, okay. Like, like an ex-president or something. Okay. That'd, that'd be cool. So why, why George Washington? Or I don't know. Just like a, a big historical figure. I feel like it's a name everyone knows. Yeah. But like, 
there's no one alive today that that knew him. Yeah, that yeah. was a long time ago. Just I feel like that'd be cool. Just talk with you know it would first be president. Cool. It would be cool. So mine would be Martin Luther King, mm, and the reason cool. being is when I was six years old, Martin Luther King was assassinated. So I was alive when he was alive, right? And I remember my mom coming out of the house and, and, and everybody was kind of like, uh, crying and stuff. And I'm six and I don't know what's going on. I'm like, what's happening? Well, there was a historical figure, a guy who was really key to the to the civil rights movement. And he just sort of, you know, they, they killed him. And my mom was like, it's, it's a sad day for us. But here we are 40 plus years later. We know who he is. He has a holiday, right? And I'm sure he probably wasn't going for that. But he influenced my life. And so I would sit with him and ask him, why nonviolent? Why did you think that that would work, mm -hmm. right, to bring people together? I would ask him that question, right, from his perspective. I want to know, like, why you thought that that would be the thing that would bring us together? And here we are years later, you know, still kind of fighting that same fight, but we've come a long way. And he was a big influence on my high school years and in, in how I kind of perceive things. So I was like, you know what? I'd like to have dinner with that guy, man. Just ask him that question. See what else he would he would give me. What other insight he could impart to me. You know what I'm saying? It'd be kind of cool. Um, tell me, what would be your dream vacation, Otis? Anywhere in the world. Anywhere is, in the world you could is go. Is money like an object? Or? Money's not an object. Okay. Um, probably a very tall mountain somewhere. A very I, tall I, mountain. Yeah, I'm not a big beach guy. I like I like I like hiking. Okay. I want to go top of a mountain. Maybe maybe Swiss Alps. Oh, I like that. that. I like that. That's pretty cool. That's that's all right. Swift. I've never been to that. What about you, Seamus? Dream vacation. Maybe like Dubai or something. Mm. Dubai. Yeah. So just, why Dubai? I don't know. I've just seen like videos of it. It seems cool there. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hot. It um, is, yeah. I mean, the Celtics just came back from Dubai. They did. Yeah. They did. They have two preseason games over there. Which, by the way, if you don't know, Mr. Davis actually works for the Celtics. A uh, shameless plug. I do that during the uh, summertime. That's my summer job. I work for the Celtics basketball camps and clinics. It's awesome. In case you never heard of the Celtics. In case you never heard of them. That's right. <laughs> all right. So, now, if you could create any club in this school at all, any club, what would the name of the club be? I know what you're going to say. And why? MMA just... club. Go ahead. I, MMA club, I would organize everybody to watch the fights together and maybe train sometimes if people's parents are okay with it. They probably wouldn't be. It's not very popular. Yeah, parents, okay, okay. I'd, you said MMA club. Yeah, definitely. So, so, so why MMA club? Why, would, why do you think that that would be a useful club for kids? Because a lot of people think it's cool, and a lot of people like to watch it, mm -hmm. but they're like, oh, I could never do it. I could never do it. You need so much athleticism. You really don't. I, I think a lot of people think it's way harder than it is, and it's very difficult. Mm. It's very, very hard. But it's mostly mental. Okay. If you if you can get past the first couple of classes, then you're you're golden. Okay. All right. I like that. That's pretty cool. All right. Same question to you, Seamus. What club would you create if you could create any club here at school that's not currently in existence right now? They don't have a weightlifting club, do they? I don't they did. So. Oh, they there used to. Power I would bring club. that back. You would bring that back. I, I, like, like I said, I don't lift as much as I, oh, I like. To. I like that idea. Okay. Actually. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, we're yeah. here to pump you up. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, so why, why that? Why would you, you would bring it back for what reason? Just, you know, like I want to lift more, but during the football season, it's hard to find the time. Mm -hmm. And if there's a weightlifting club, just like after school, I, I think it would help a lot of athletes too, and just mm -hmm. anyone who wants to join. It, it, it's good for you. It's fun. It, it'd be great if just everyone could do it in the weight room right over there. I like it. I like it. So for me, Mr. Davis is. I used to be an avid weightlifter, but I'll tell you, I'm more but like the body weight guy. Like, so I do push-ups and, and, and planks and stuff like that to try to, like, get my core strong. I'm more of that type of guy. I used to be, like, me and my brother used to go crazy on the weights when we were younger. You know, I met my wife. I had 17-inch arms. That's another, that's another story. <laughs> but, you know, um, it's, it's great that uh, weightlifting because it's good for your health. It's good for all the folks to get their bones nice and strong mm -hmm. and and, you know, it's always good to, like, just feel good about yourself. You know what I mean? And so bringing that club back would be awesome, too. Right? So do you guys have any siblings? By I, the way? I have do a have three-year-old brother. You have a three-year-old brother? Three-year-old brother. That's a huge gap. What about you? I have a sister in the middle school. Sister in the middle school. So think about this for a second. Mr. Davis has seven children. So my oldest <laughs> child is 39, and my youngest child is 19. So yeah. there's a 20-year gap between the two of them. 
So uh, to, it's interesting too because what when my oldest child, Caitlin, she's 39, you know, 20, 20 years ago when she was 19, social media wasn't such a huge thing as it is today. You guys have grown up with that. So tell me a little bit about that. How has social media influenced you guys in, the, in your thinking? What kind of footprint has social media kind of left on you, Otis? Um, for me, I, I'm not on social media like a crazy amount. But mm -hmm. I think it's definitely left an impact. It definitely helps me stay in touch with people, especially during COVID. Because mm. it's, it's not like you can go. Well, in, during COVID for a couple of months, I lived in Vermont with my mom. Mm -hmm. So the only way I could talk to my friends back home was through social media, through Snapchat, through messages. So that is definitely like it definitely helped me maintain some friendships during COVID nice. that I wouldn't have been able to if I didn't have social media. Okay. All right, I like that. What about you, Seamus? Same thing? Yeah, the staying connected with friends is big. Just, I know social media can get to people's heads easy. I, mm -hmm. I try to like, limit my time on there so it doesn't get to my head. Yeah, no question. I mean, it, it's like a double-edged sword, you know? Sometimes it's good because you can use it for, to really reach out to people. And like, you know, I have clients and certain things that I talk to on social media. It's great. But then there are the times where it's like, whoa, wait a minute, what, what are we doing here? Like, you know, bullying is a thing, you know, cyberbullying and all of that is, 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 is something that's in now, it's here. So we, we got to really kind of deal with it a little bit. But you're right, it's a, it's a double-edged sword, social media. It can be used, used for good and, 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 and sometimes not so good, right? So we got to make sure we have that, find that balance no matter what it is that we're doing in our lives, and, you know what I mean? Um, do you have a favorite teacher or a subject in school? I was really hoping you'd ask that question. Can I name a couple teachers? You can, indeed. Okay. Shout out to Mr. Davis, Mr. Riley, Miss Collins, Mr. Pittman, Mr. Manis, and Miss Fecto. Those mm. are pro that's probably my top six teachers. Nice. Through all of high school. Appreciate They're that. All very great people. Appreciate that. And the same to you, Seamus. I think I've had about all those teachers too. <laughs> <laughs> You have indeed. Not, not to steal his answer. But. No, 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 you're right. You're right, you have. Because you guys both basically been in the same classes. Yeah, we've you know, had a lot every year. Right? Every year. Our which guidance which counselors similar. must talk to each other. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, oh, let's put these guys together. They're like yeah, two peas in a pod. You know what I mean? So um, what's your favorite subject, though? My favorite Same subject? Um, I've always liked like history. It's always just there's always something new to learn. Hey, so Mr. H Mr. Davis, hello, being a humanities teacher, teaches history and English. I love those subjects both. And it's been it's been my pleasure to have been with these guys for the last four years and, and seeing these guys walking in the hallways and giving them a little pound every and give them a pound and give them a pound and, and see these guys. And it's been awesome. But now your journey is going to move on. Your footprints are going to be felt here in the halls of BHS from our teachers that, that for years to come. But you guys are moving on to another journey in your life, and it's exciting to be able to do that, right? To see how you've grown from freshmen to seniors, and now you're gonna take those footprints that those teachers that, that Otis mentioned and move it forward out into the world and, and take your place in the world and leave footprints out there, which is one of the, the greatest joys that I have as an educator, knowing that I had a hand in and choosing, you guys choosing what you want to do, but me helping you get to make those choices. You know what I mean? It's, it's been great. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the show. I hate when it's over, but it's over. Um, my name is Mr. Davis. Don't forget to check us out on uh, Channel 22. This will be posted on our YouTube channel, of course. And uh, next week, we'll be coming to you from uh, a new studio. I can't wait to see that. It's going to be fun. All right. Uh, thank you, my guy, Seamus Lorden, and thank you, my guy, Otis Laverie. Thank you. I am Mr. Davis, and Footprints, we are out. See you.